Hey, a pleasant good afternoon, everybody. This is Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Boric, and this is going to be the video on the Los Angeles Dodgers making the postseason yet again. Dodgers fans, your Dodgers did it, proving all of the preseason projectors right. Everybody pretty much had these Dodgers in the postseason. They got a great ownership group that pumps money into the team. They got a good system, and they got a great major league roster already. The only problem, of course, for them this year was the fact that their fellow division foes, the San Francisco Giants that I did a video on before, as well as many other teams, check them out in the MLB Playoff Bound um, playlist on my channel if you enjoy them. And then also please subscribe down below or at the top widget at the top if you enjoy that. But the San Francisco Giants were, of course, their only bugaboo this year. Otherwise, the, the um not the Giants, the Dodgers had a fantastic season as I'm repping the colors of your Los Angeles Dodgers right now for this video. But, Let's get right into it. I want to highlight, obviously you got the big players on this team, but I always like highlighting the other guys. Chris Taylor's been a bat out of hell. That's honestly the best way to describe him this season, but really since the Los Angeles Dodgers acquired this guy, uh, he's just been so much better there than he was at his time in Seattle. They figured it out. They altered his swing. They got him going. They got him going great, and he's been electric in Los Angeles. This year he had 20 home runs and 73 RBI. His best season. Another guy that's been very good in his career, whether it's with the Diamondbacks or now with the LA Dodgers, is A.J. Pollock. The problem with A.J. Pollock in his career is he's just one of those guys that has issues staying on the field, but when he does, he produces at a pretty high level. This year he produced at a very high clip with an 892 OPS, 9 steals, 297 average, 21 homers, and 69 RBIs even. Excuse me. So, A.J. Pollock had a great season. He can still pick it really good in the outfield as well. He fields at a very good level still for his age. And he's a guy that seems like hopefully he's coming back into what he was. And hopefully, knock on wood, can stay healthy and continue to be a successful player for the Dodgers. Because it's nice to see him get back to having a very successful season. He was a very successful player a couple years back before injuries. And now he got back to that this year. That was a big part of the team. And a big addition... <clears throat> For the Dodgers, too, coming from the Angels that he actually pulled up his stats and did really good once he went to L.A., is Albert Pujols, because they already have enough bats in that lineup via Mookie Beck. Even in a struggling season, you still have Cody Bellinger. you got Max Muncy, who's a beast at the plate. And now you had Albert Pujols just to mix in there, kind of for the fun of it. And um, he has a great season as well. Muncy, of course, this year just missed um, 100 RBIs at 94 and 36 home runs. So this team has a lethal lineup. They also have one of the best catchers in baseball and Will Smith. Great behind the plate, also a great overall hitter. So they got that going for them. Plus, this team, just like their division opponent, the Giants, except for the Dodgers, they got the more proven and track record pitching, has the great statistical pitching combined with the statistical hitting during this season. And that obviously goes in bunches and goes a long way in the postseason. The only other bugaboo for the Dodgers, other than the Giants, are the fact that the Giants put them up against the Cardinals, who are basically the um, it, basically the equivalent team to what the 07 Rockies were, when they were just hot as a firecracker. And they're going to have to play them, and I'll be doing a preview for that series tomorrow prior to that ball game, so stay tuned for that. But that's a, it's going to be somewhat of an issue for them. But they, of course, got the pitching of the stud, Walker Bueller, who again had a great season, 2-4-7 ERA, 16-4. and four. They, of course, obviously have Clayton Kershaw. They, of course, have Julio Urias, who's one of the better young pitchers in baseball from the left side. He had 20 wins this year. Yes, 20, 20, and 3. I understand the win isn't as big of a stat for people this year, but 20 damn wins is very impressive. Uh, Blake Trinan's a very good relief pitcher. David Price is somebody similar to how Tanner um, Hoke is a young guy, adds ability to use out of different abilities um, for the Red Sox. David Price is a veteran, does that for them. You can use him if you have to as a starter, if it's a series that a bunch of people pitch in, or as we know, when you get deep in the postseason, it's all hands on deck. So you might have to use a starter in an extra innings game. And then David Price, for example, would have to be used in a different game. He just adds that flexibility for you. But either way, he can definitely be very good out of the pen. So it's nice to just have that flexibility. But the big kahuna for this team, and then you, of course, have Corey Knebel, Kenley Jansen, and Joe Kelly, who I do love him. You either love or hate Joe Kelly. I've always loved Joe Kelly and that energy and weirdness and oddity he brings. So, yeah, he's a good pitcher, and he's a funny, weird dude. 
But you, of course, got the big kahuna, which is Max Scherzer, who's been lights out, probably going to win another Cy Young because of how ridiculous he's been. Since he's going to the Dodgers, he's the guy that's going to be starting the wild card game, so that's great for them against Adam Wainwright, if I remember correctly, and that's going to be how that happens. He's the big reason why this team was able to even keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, and get all the way back, combined with the people I mentioned earlier, the Munchies of the World, the Pollocks, the Taylors, obviously the Mookie Betches of the World. Those guys are the huge reasons why this team got so close to being able to reclaim that division with how good of a season the Giants have. And you have to give a hats off for the Dodgers because both of these teams were two of the best teams in the league. So the Dodgers have as good of a chance as any. It's just they have a tougher road automatically just because they have the one-game playoff where we all know from the history of baseball, Anything can happen in one game. The Orioles beat the best team in the league. The Diamondbacks beat the best team in the league in one game sometimes in a series. So that's the difference here. Anything can happen in one game. That's the only concern for the Dodgers because, again, their team, to conclude this video, has a great overall pitching stats, combined with also great defensive stats, I should add, and combined with very, very good hitting stats. So that's a very good um, key for success. The only issue is, a lot of the same things that I just mentioned are what helped the Cardinals fuel that winning streak and get to where they are. But other than that, this Dodgers team set, they just got to get through that one game playoff and they got a hell of a pitcher to do it. I hope you all enjoyed this video of the Dodgers making the postseason yet again for their LA Dodger fans. Congratulations to you all. Have a great, safe, and pleasant day. Enjoy the MLB playoffs. As always, please subscribe to the channel down below or above on that cool Professor Joe Widget. If you enjoy the content, peace out everybody and enjoy the MLB playoffs. Peace.